All right, so uh, this is probably one of my most favorite engagements with students in class because you pose the question and you just see their you know minds exploding, sort of face melting demonstrations, and uh, it has to do with rotational inertia. Just a disclosure. We don't do any explosions or face melting or endorse that type of action in the classroom. Uh, and so what I'm going to be doing are demos that use our rotational inertia set as well as our spherical mass set and our standard density set. And so these components, everything that's on this blue box are PASCO products. There should be one more sphere here, but we don't need it. It's the same size as one of these. These are all uh, pieces of scrap material and a, and a giant ball bearing that I found out in our machine shop that we'll, we'll also use, but um, you, know, you don't need these. I'm gonna add these for emphasis. Uh, and so the first question that I ask students is, I've got these two cylinders, right? They're two metal cylinders. This one in my left hand, your right, is brass, and this one in my right hand, your left, is aluminum. They are the exact same size, right? Same length, same diameter. These cylinders just have a different mass, right? And so if I put them on this ramp, and this ramp is not exactly flat. You know, I would have hoped that this thing would have been perfectly flat, but it's got a little bit of a bow to it, but that's no big deal. So I've got these two cylinders on this ramp, right? When I remove that stay and they start rolling, which one is going to win the race? Which one is going to hit the bottom first? Who wants to take a guess? Janet, which one do you think is going to reach the bottom first? The aluminum or the brass? Heavier or lighter? Heavier? Okay. All right. So we get that a lot. Right? The brass is heavier. When I remove this, it's going to roll down, probably less effect from friction. Maybe gravity's acting on it a little bit more. Let's go ahead and test it. We're scientists, that's what we do. So three, two, one. And they reach the bottom at the exact same time. May not have been exactly the same time, but just about the same time, right? So mass, does it affect this race? You know? No, it doesn't. In fact, we could have gone further. There's a third cylinder, this plastic. It's even lower mass. We could have had the race again and sure enough, they would have reached the bottom at the exact same time. JJ, you didn't give that option to Janet. You said which one goes first. You didn't give her the option of saying the same time. Ah. It was a trick question. <laughs> that wasn't nice. That was not nice. OK, I'm sorry. And so now what we're going to do is I am going to take a new cylinder that has a larger diameter. right? And so we're going to ask the question again, Janet, Maybe we'll ask Nolan this time. Nolan, which one of these is going to win the race? The larger diameter or the smaller diameter? The larger diameter. Larger diameter? OK. So we've got the larger diameter. And let me set these up. Let me stage them here. And so I'm going to let them run the race, and we'll see which one wins the race. Whoops. So three, two, one. No effect, right? So diameter has no effect. And we have another, maybe it's the material. Does the type of material affect which one wins the race? Three, two, one. Absolutely not. So mass, diameter, the material, which is effectively uh, the mass, right, doesn't affect the race. So now I've got, make sure that one doesn't roll off. I have two cylinders, but this one is a ring instead of a solid cylinder like this, right? Do you think this will affect which one wins the race? JP, which do you think? I think every single time you end up doing the same thing, and it's always the same answer. They always get there at the same time. OK. So I'm going to say they get there at the same time. So they get there at the same time. So we've got a ring and a disc. And we've seen them all sort of reach the end at the same time. Let, we're scientists. Let's test this. Three, two, one. Not uh, nice, JJ. Definitely not nice. JP, your intuition is amazing. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, <laughs> Definitely not nice. Well, what happened here? Yeah, so we've, we just saw that the ring, right, loses the race, right? So this disc, this solid disc, seems to roll down the ramp faster than the ring does. Well, let's test oh. some other permutations. So we've got a, and now we had, we tried two discs of different diameter radius, right? And they reached the bottom at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a ring here as well and a disc. Which one do you think is gonna win the race? Janet, which one do you think is going to win the race? The ring or the disc? The ring. The ring, okay. Because it's smaller, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> three, two, one. Yeah, this is so counterintuitive. This isn't what anybody would think it would be. This is a, a really exciting demonstration because it's constantly challenging yeah. what I want to believe. Yeah, so clearly this ring loses the race, right? But you know what? There's something else that we haven't tested yet, and it is the length of the cylinder, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is not part of the set, but I just happen to have these. So I've got mm -hmm. two cylinders, same diameter. The masses are different, but we already showed that mass doesn't affect it, right? Mm -hmm. So do we think the length of the cylinders will affect it? Now for this one, I'm going to need to use this meter stick. And uh, you might want to watch your toes. Right, yeah, I'll watch that. So we've got two cylinders. Do that. Three, two, one. Ooh, now it looked like they may have reached the bottom at the same time, but I think that might have been me with this meter stick. Let me try that again. I'll do it with two hands, ready? Three, two, one. Oh yeah, they did not reach at the same time. So, so, so I actually bumped it with the meter stick again. I'm not doing a good job, but these actually reach the bottom at the same time. Oh, they do? They do, yeah, because it turns out, because they're solid cylinders, they will, the, the race will be a tie every time. So it, it, it appears to me that it's, it's a matter of solid versus hollow. That's exactly like we, we've right. We've already identified that mass doesn't do it. We've already identified that the, the size doesn't do it. But this whole solid versus hollow uh, is what's throwing everybody off on their assumptions. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so even this race. Okay, so they're right? both solid. So they're, gonna, they're, they're going to They're going to go at the same they'll time. They'll go at the same time. All right. This one is. Yeah, fool me three times, shame on me. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> right, and so now we can say that these discs, or excuse me, these rings lose the race, right? So what happens if we do both of the rings at the same time? Right, because they're both hollow. Yeah. Uh, and we've already identified that mass doesn't affect it, but they're They are hollow, definitely different mass. But they're different... Definitely different mass, but mass didn't affect it. They are both hollow. I don't know, JJ, what? No, I have no idea. I, let's be scientists again, and let's go ahead and give this a shot. Ready? Three, two, one. At the same time. At the same time. So both hollow, yep. different mass. We knew that mass didn't affect it. They were both hollow. Even though the hollow, the, the space in between is different. Oh, yeah, different. much different. And so it turns out that no matter the length, no matter the diameter, no matter the mass, if you have two rings like this, right, that have the, the same sort of density or, or amount of mass thickness on this ring here, they're gonna reach the bottom at the same time every, every single time. time. Yeah, and the same thing goes for solid disks. They could be different mass, they could be different diameter, they could be different length. They're going to win, they're going to tie every single time. But if you have a mix of a disc and a ring, the ring loses every time. And, it's, and why? It's so now we say yes. the answer behind why everybody keeps getting this wrong is... And the reason is it's because the mass of this object is distributed further from the axis of rotation. So this has mass, let's say, uniform density all the way across from the center all the way to the edge, mm -hmm. this one has its mass located at its edge. And so it has, its rotational inertia is affecting its ability to convert potential energy to linear kinetic energy. In fact, it needs to convert 
more energy, more potential energy per unit mass into rotational kinetic energy. Because its mass is distributed to the outer further edges. From, that's right. And this one has mass all the way across, so it's distributing its potential energy per unit mass, right? Because it takes less energy to, to convert that uh, to motion in the center. Right. I see. Yeah. And so uh, this extends beyond disks and rings, too. So we did cylinders, but we also have spheres. And so how, do, how does a sphere behave in the same way, right? And so the set comes with these two spheres, right? Are these solid? These are both solid, yes. Okay. Okay, and so, oops, do this the other way. So we've got a, two solid spheres, right, about to run the race. Mm-hmm. And that's what I would expect. After yes. your last demonstration now, recognizing they're both solid, uh, understanding that they both now have to convert the same amount of mass to energy, uh, that they should have arrived at the same time, and they did. That's right. And, and so where you got me the first time, now I'm going okay. And so I would imagine any of those solid spheres, regardless of the size, are always going to reach at the same time. That's right. So if they're solid, they're going to reach the bottom at the same time. If they have that same sort of distribution of mass away from that rotational axis, they're going to reach the bottom at the same time. And so now I've got two more spheres. Uh-huh. They look identical. They look identical. I'm going to just move them up a little bit higher. Uh-huh. Okay. One definitely got there first. Yeah. So what yeah, do you think? What, so, so, yeah. So what are you doing here? <laughs> so, all right, so as I pick them up, I, they have a different mass. They do. They and certainly do. one of these is hollow, isn't it? Yeah. So, ah, so, okay. so, well, so, well so hold on, so they have a different mass. They do. Is, it, is there, do we have well, an we issue with that? We already identified that mass wasn't part of what contributed to the difference in speed. Yes, and we can, we can galvanize that with students by using, let me put that one in front. Now we've got a solid plastic sphere and a solid metal sphere. Let me start that over, I gotta get better at my release. Mm -hmm. And they hit at the same no time. Effect. So they're both solid, they hit the same time. Yes. The mass has no effect. Even though these two have different masses, they're definitely hitting at a different time. And so you have to reach the conclusion that ball is hollow. This ball, this sphere is certainly hollow. Uh -huh. And that is part of the set. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so, <laughs> so every time you try to trick me. But the really nice thing is, JJ, we're, we're doing through, going through a progression where you're actually emphasizing the concept and now I'm able to reach some reasonable conclusions based on what you've been showing, which that, is really fun. That's correct. And that is the rotational inertia race. And so, like I said, there's three products. There's the rotational inertia set, the spherical mass set, and this comes with the fourth sphere. This is steel. This one is hollow. There is a solid aluminum and then a solid plastic. And then these come from our density set, and there are three cylinders that come with it. A third is a plastic one. That's awesome. What a great demonstration. Thank you, Thank you. for teaching me and everybody at home a little bit about rotational inertia.